Digital Music Trends at South by Southwest 2013 and I'm here with uh, Sean Glover who is the manager of artists uh, relations at Sound Exchange. So hi Sean and thanks for joining me on the show. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me. Great. So let's talk about, you know, Sound Exchange in general, just like a very quick overview for just in case people haven't heard about you guys too. Well, Sound Exchange collects and distributes digital royalties for music streamed on the web, cable and satellite. So XM Sirius, Pandora, and the many the blue stations at the end of your cable station, we collect all those royalties and we pay the featured artists and the sound recording copyright owner. Yeah, uh, you know I, we talked about Sound Exchange a lot on, on, on uh, Digital Music Trends. Of course, uh, every time the numbers come out or if, if there's some issues like the, you know the the Fairness Act last year. Um, and uh, first of all, it's a, it's an incredible story of growth. Uh, and uh, you know al alongside this growth, of course, it's a, it's a question of managing that growth. So that must have been an incredible job to manage the growth of organization so quickly, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that we uh, kind of anticipated as the music industry changed and, you know, uh, people were more, less concerned with actually, um, uh, you know, possessing music but consuming it in different ways. So, yeah. and streaming music is one of the main ways that people are consuming it and, you, and that's very evident by the success we've had uh, with the growth of paying out artists and record labels. Yeah. So, so physical sales are way down, but consumption is through the roof. Yeah. yeah, sure. And as a company, do you have to like really expand a lot in terms of staffing up or anything like that uh, to, to cater for this for this growth? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've uh, we, we've had to staff up in the last two years. I mean, we've we, we were bursting at the seams, uh, so to speak, and uh, at one point last summer. Um, you know, even though we do have very uh, robust system that helps calculate those royalties, but there's a lot that goes in to make sure we pay out um, quarterly, and we we've never missed a quarterly payment, and we make sure uh, that that happens by making sure we have the right, you know, technology, technological resources, and human resources. Yeah, yeah, sure. On the digital front, of course, you know, uh, Pandora is uh, one of the biggest contributors to Sound Exchange. Uh, alongside Series XM, and uh, you know the royalties are uh, the payments are growing uh, quarter on quarter. You know there was a 10 percent increase between Q3 and Q4, and you know there was a massive increase between 2011 and 2012. And so, uh, how do you see this uh, this uh, carrying on over like the next couple of years? Do you have any projections on on what on, you know on, on, on growth and and what do you expect to get? Um, even even from additional services that are not the ones that you currently have. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I just think that you know, as a if someone that wants to get in the digital streaming space, uh, Sound Exchange makes it you know fairly easy. You know, it's a statutory license, so you can just uh, you know elect what license you like to use uh, and play all the music you want to play. So I don't see nothing but growth uh, in that space to continue to grow yeah. and all across the board, not just uh, internet radio, but satellite and cable. Of course, and, and here, here at uh, South by Southwest, of course, the, the, the main message at the stand is to really like try and get the word out that, that you guys are there and that artists need to, to get in touch. So, so how big of a problem is it for you uh, to match uh, the songs to, to the artists and make the payments accordingly? Well, actually, um, I mean, we, we do a great job at that. I think one of the, the one thing that uh, sort of hamstrings us, if you will, is that we, want, we need artists to register to, to register, pay them. Yeah. We're kind of similar, you know, kind of like still the new guys on the block as compared to other organizations that does this type of work. Um, so one of the main reasons why we're here is to register artists, uh, as you can see from our board here, and, and to get artists to become members. Yeah of yeah, sound exchange. Sure. sure, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we're talking about, uh, with the guys here, about how, you know, you also have relationships with uh, international uh, organizations that do, you know, similar work to what you do. Uh, is, it, is it easy to work with them to, to make sure that you, you can collect your, your eyes and they can collect theirs? Oh, absolutely, man. We have uh, reciprocal agreements with, uh, I think it's over 15 countries, uh, you know, 15 plus countries, yeah. but it's fairly easy. What we do is, you know, we collect for their artists, um, and they collect for our artists, and when we distribute, um, you know, we send them their payments, and they send us for the U.S. artists. So we've established some great relationships, and we're continuing to uh, add other territories to that list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looking at uh, satellite radio, there was a uh, an increase in the rates uh, recently uh, that satellite radio is due to pay. Uh, so. Well, how do you guys feel about uh, that increase? And uh, do you think it was, you know, it was fair? And it, you know, would you like to see Salad Radio pay more, or, or are you happy with with the, the rates that were set? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we we obviously want artists to be compensated fairly for um, you know you know services that you know pretty much build their 
their their business off of the the um, you know um, um, the intellectual property. Yeah, the music that these artists create. So we definitely think for right now that the um, the rates are fair. Yeah, cool. And uh, on the on the online streaming, of course, there's a there's a continuing debate on rates, of course, because satellite radio pays a lot less than what uh, streaming uh, online streaming radio pays in the U.S. And of course, last year it was a big uh, it was a big controversy when the Internet Radio Fairness Act uh, was proposed, and of course, uh, most music uh, organizations, as well as Sound Exchange and the labels and everybody, were opposed to it, and uh, it didn't make it out of committee. Uh, you know, the the rumors are that this year something along those lines is going to be proposed again. Yeah, so you guys prepare to like counter it the same way you did the first time around? I mean, I mean, the bottom line with that story is we're we're gonna fight. We're big advocates of music and yeah. musicians and the creators of those music. So, um, any way, shape, or form that we can make sure that they have a viable, um, uh, viable payments for their hard work, we're definitely gonna be there yeah. on that forefront as the leaders in the digital music space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And finally, you know, what's your relationship like with the artists? You know, do you have any? Uh, specific stories of people that have been, you know, overwhelmed or you're really like happy with uh, what you guys have done, or maybe didn't know that they could get money th through these channels. Oh yeah, I mean we we uh, I mean I get it. You know, more specifically, I get I, you know it's one of my main job functions is to inform artists and make sure they're registered and to maintain and cultivate those relationships. Yeah. But you know, every you know we distribute quarterly, but I I can tell you every quarter we get calls. We get emails saying, thank you, I had no idea I was owed this. Because you got to think, traditionally artists, when you think of a performance royalty for radio, they don't pay that on terrestrial radio. Yeah. So, you know, we spend a lot of time just convincing the artists that this is real money. We are one of those rare things that sounds too good to be true, but is true. So, um, you know, artists tell me from small to big, thank you, you know, this, this check, you know, help me pay my rent, help me pay my light bill. Um, they love us and we love them and you know as long as I'm in this position we're going to make sure that uh, we continue to have a great uh, relationship with the creators of music. Sure and uh, looking at the list um, I was looking on the website at the list of uh, um, companies that are uh, paying to sound exchange uh, in order to use music of course uh, we all know about Sirius XM and Pandora because they're the, they're, they're the biggest uh, ones but what makes up the bulk of like the other contributors that, that, that pay for, for, for the license? Yeah, I mean, so you got, well, the satellite is only one company, obviously, but um, internet radio is, you know, there are thousands of stations. Um, yeah. um, the irony to that, though, is that even though terrestrial radio doesn't pay for over-the-air uh, performance royalties, those same stations actually pay a digital performance fee because they retransmit over the internet. Yeah. So it's okay for them to pay in one space but not the other. Yeah. So there's, if you just think of uh, you know, the radio stations in your local town, um, you know, most of the time they have that same, they rebroadcast or they have totally new programming on the web. So um, there's hundreds of radio stations and then with the cable aspect you have um, we call it the blue channels at the end of your cable, yeah. whether it's DirecTV or Comcast or those 800 channels. Um, um, you know, there's, it's not many of those guys, but they add channels um, often. Yeah. And finally, let's finish by talking about tracking. Of course, that's uh, the biggest part of, of uh, Sound Exchange's job and any collection society, really tracking uh, the plays as accurately as possible. How are the tools evolving for doing that? And, uh, you know, what's your main source of information? Well, um, data ingestion is has been uh, you know quite difficult, um, you know, if you will, because um, there's no really set way or you know standard way in, um, legally that they have to report. So it's been sort of patchy and not not standardized. So, but we have a very very uh, robust team of staff that does a good job of deciphering the logs that are are fed to us. Um, this data ingestion problem is not a sound exchange problem. This is worldwide, so the industry as a whole has this problem. Um, hopefully, we'll get to the point one day where it's standard across the board, where not just in the U.S. but other territories, we do it the same way, and it'll, yeah. it'll make the process much easier and fluent. Well, it was great talking to you. Thanks so much for your time, and have a great South by. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me, and I, and I will. I plan to. And uh, check out soundexchange.com if you are a U.S. artist and you are not registered with them. Uh, and, and also check out the rest of the DMT's coverage of South by on digitalmusictrends.com slash SXSW. Thank you.